Wangeshi Mutu is one of today's leading contemporary artists. She is best known for her intricate collages. They are beautiful and beguiling, while also provocative and disturbing. Mutu is a truly global artist, born in Kenya, schooled in Britain, and a graduate of Yale. She now lives and works in New York. Through art, she tackles issues that are some of the most relevant of our time. Beauty and the female body, consumerism, post-colonialism, African identity, and the politics of violence. In January 2010, Art Gallery of Ontario curator David Mose visited Wangeshi Mutu in her Brooklyn studio to work with her on the final touches of her exhibition at the AGO, which opened February 24, 2010. So how long would it have taken you to make a work like this? Well, this is, you know, this is where it's hard to tell what the length of time is. It, this has been in the studio since 2004. And it's not because that's how long it took me to do it. It's just it was here for a while, and I took it to one level of finish, and then I stopped, and then I restarted it. And now, now I finally had a reason to, to finish it up. I really wanted to get it done. And um, and so it's finished, but it's, you know, it's not, it didn't take six years, but it did. Most of Wangeshi Mutu's works depict women. By splicing together body parts from fashion and porn magazines, medical and motorcycle drawings, she combines alluring and repugnant body parts to create a synthetic whole. Whether it's a woman's face or full body, Mutu presents the female form in contradictory terms, attractive while also grotesque, tortured but also empowered. Take, for example, her 2006 work, The Ark Collection. In this particular case, there's two elements placed together. There's the postcard piece, which is from this particular series of photographs called Women of the African Ark, done by um, these photographers who've produced a lot of photography of African people, indigenous, tribal African people and supposedly uh, they've helped to, I guess, encase and em embalm a, s a, p a time of history when Africa was, like, more, was more traditional and tribal, and now it's about to change. Modernity is about to ruin these, you know, n native uh, uh, beauties that existed. And it's absolute nonsense. There's a woman wearing traditional earrings, but she's got a T-shirt on and a and a skirt, you know, um, made in Thailand. They're not going to put her in the pictures. They're going to make sure they get only the ceremonial because they have a very specific agenda, and I have a problem with that agenda. So that fiction, um, together with the fiction of the hypersexualized black female that you see a lot more in media in the West, um, especially in America, is they're disturbing and they uh, perpetrate a, a kind of an idea that that's who a black woman is in this society, or can only be in this society. Either the super traditional African woman with the big earrings or a scarification, which, you know, there is and exists, or this other woman that kind of is a, a pin-up, a very sort of vile, erotic, hypersexualized pin-up. So the, the, these two objectifications are placed together, and there's this kind of dialogue going on between them in the arc, and they're very interesting to look at, but ultimately I remove the most titillating parts. The central part of the shot is removed, and what you have is this synergy between the two. And it's a, it's a, I think it's a fantastic kind of harmony that happens, and it's also it, it makes people reflect on both things without actually replicating the objectification of either one of them. So is this the typical way a large drawing of yours begins? This is the second incarnation. The first is actually a small drawing. It starts relatively small. So, I mean, as you can see, it's changed. After this, it goes on to the operating table, and that's where I begin the collage, watercolor, and the ink work. Most often, the skin is this combination of inks and pigments that create this marble effect and that always happens with the work horizontal? It has to, because it is, it's all liquid, it's all gravity. Um, 
requires gravity to be in the right direction. Otherwise, it just drips off. Mm -hmm. And then there's a lot of things I put in there that are uh, that require to, to really settle and dry. Is that held by a fixative, or is it just a yeah, pigment that, that holds of, all these materials? It's archival adhesive. There's ink. There's lots and lots of uh, glitter and paint. Sometimes I use soil. This is particular color of soil that I love. It reminds me of home. I actually have soil from home. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I embed pearls and things into them, so that requires a lot of adhesive, but it also ne I need to build around the pearls to actually hold them together. They still need a little bed to sit on, otherwise they're just, it's just the tip of a sphere on a flat surface. is not enough of a glue. Mm -hmm. So that glitter allows me to build these mounds around the pearls. It's also interesting for me to try to make shape and form with ink in ways that are not so under my control. I love drawing, but it also comes quite easily to me, so I like to challenge myself with these more expressive marks and, and shapes. Wange Shimutu's artworks are not confined to the parameters of the paper. She is also known for larger installations that feature her films, blanketed walls, bottles that drip red fluids, and damaged surfaces such as the wounded wall featured as part of her 2006 work, Sleeping Heads. And the installation has the collages that are, as you said, discrete works, but they're embedded and placed against this backdrop that is not just a wall, it's a damaged wall. It's a wall that has like a, a pattern to it of wounds. I'm always a little nervous about the inertness and the, 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 the stillness of the white cube. People who are very familiar with art viewing take it for granted that everyone should know how to behave once they enter that space. But it's very odd to walk into an empty space and no one talks to you, mm -hmm. and all there is is objects and images and things that are, for all intents and purposes, dead, kind of staring back at you. It's like, what do you do? I think I've always approached the space of a museum or a gallery as if it, um, not, not as if it, it has meaning instantly, but as if it is a blank canvas, mm -hmm. and it requires um, a little bit of a prelude for all of us. I try to kind of play with the walls, to play with the, the, the space, because I know that it should always challenge. I want to be challenged. I want to continue to think of it as something that is foreign, you know, and not just my playground, because it wasn't when I began doing this.